Alright guys, Hatch Comic again today. I hope you're doing good and enjoying your day so far. One of the big conversations in the CDL going into next year is how many massive changes are actually going to occur to this league, right? The franchise era is effectively over in many respects. The franchise payments have been refunded. The question is, what's going to change in the league? Is the city-based stuff going to disappear? And what does it mean for the salaries as well? Over the last several years, the salaries in many respects have been creeping up and up, potentially year on year. But over the last few years, some teams have been forced to take salary cuts. The rumour was a few days ago, the same is now going to be true for the to guys. Hex gives his perspective on the situation and also just on the esports situation at large and the salary numbers that have been potentially rather inflated over these last few years. Very much into to your thoughts on what it means in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to get into today. Obviously some clips here from Scum. We will see some interesting clips at the end of the video as well. Just quickly because Opta Gaming are actually asking the question now what COD game would you like to see them play? Of course in the Optic Legacy match which is coming up shortly. So, um, you know, I've talked about this over the last few days and kind of I wondered, like, I thought they might have decided, right? But uh, maybe they haven't decided yet. I think most of you guys in the comments have been saying Cold War might be a reasonable middle ground. I don't know if I want to see them play Cold War really. Like, you know, I've seen quite a lot of Cold War. The last few years, often the teams and the players will go back to Cold War in the offseason. I feel like I've seen a lot of it be played and I don't feel like, you know, it's an especially spectacular title compared to some others that I rather like, as you guys are aware. But... It is a game that all of these guys on the right-hand side played. To be fair, Pred wasn't actually, you know, he hadn't had his rookie year yet. So in terms of fairness, maybe Cold War could be one of the best, just because Kenny, of course, played it, Shotzi played it, Dashi played it, Pred didn't play it yet, and of the Dynasty, Skump was playing that year, as was Krim, as was Foreman, and Karma had just retired. Although Karma played a lot of like off-season tournaments that year and was like the best player of the game at those tournaments at the start of the title. So I feel like Cold War would be quite competitive, and of course, it's the only title really where you get a lot of crossover here between the players, because in Vanguard, I guess, you know, Krim and Skump were still around in Vanguard, but by then Formal had retired. So it was like all of these guys were playing. None of these guys are playing. Cold War 2020, 2021, that was kind of the crossover period between these two sets of players. So maybe that's where you go. But I think many would like to see them play, you know, an older title, you know, a Black Ops 3 or something to that effect. I know that Kenny's been playing lots of eights over the last couple of days. It's interesting, isn't it, that ranked is riddled with cheaters and there's not much you can do about it. It will be the same probably next year as well. So, um, you know, the players are back to playing Money 8, and I've got no problem with that. I think it's very entertaining. Obviously, Draza has been on it as well. It's funny, right? I wake up every morning and I turn on Draza's stream, and at like 7, 8, 9 a.m. my time, Draza is still playing Chals. And, um, you know, it is sensational content, actually. I will share a couple of clips of this at the end of the video because they bottled a bad one versus three against Capsidal, still won the map. And, um, and then, well, Draza was talking a bit of trash at the end because Cap was clapping back. Capsidal's an interesting player in this Wastomania period as well, I'm not going to lie just because he's usually in contention for roster spots at the start of a season. Last year, he was on Boston, of course, to start the year. They made that maybe controversial decision to get rid of Cap over Snoopy, but of course, Snoopy was going to be their man. They kept him on. They got rid of Capsidal. They made the changes they did. It never really worked, let's be honest. And Capsidal is a player, kind of like Nero, I would say, in some respects, maybe not quite with the experience and the upside and the tenure and the impact that Nero sometimes has. But I think Capsidal is you know, in that conversation with those former Boston Breach guys as well of being a highly impactful player when he, you know, he's a fast-paced player. I feel like Cap is the type of guy that will suit a game like Black Ops 6. Capsidal, Nero, Hook, right, these type of players... You know, they will be up and down, that's how it is, and you probably need to pair them with an SMG that has a bit more consistency in play. But nonetheless, when they're on, they will be very impactful. So I think Capstall is a name to keep in mind in this roster period. Of course, Kremp as well, you can't discount. And of course, TJ. I mean, TJ had a great bounce back year last year, but it's not clear at all where he's going to end up right now. Of course, he was released from the Ravens, and we don't know what Ravens are planning to do. Of course, there's guys like Geo, you know, that are in the conversation, because Vegas have made their changes. You know, Geo, Johnny, Attach, right? He's of course available, as is Nero. Like, there's not that many spots for these guys to fill at the end of the day. And then you've got, from the AR side, you've got Clayster, probably would still like to get a spot. Slasher, I think, absolutely should get a spot. So, you know, whether like Slasher and Geo could think about running it up, or, you know, Attach and Geo, or something like that could be, I mean, Attach and Geo played last year, to be fair. Attach and Sib, I guess, is what I was going for. Maybe that could be a duo 
somewhere with a couple of SMGs, but you, I say somewhere, I'm like, okay, where? Let me go through the options. There's not that many options rating rights. Really, we're talking G2, and we're talking potentially, obviously Cloud9's an option, but they've got Skies and Kiz, so that kind of, well, at least as it stands, form as part of their roster, although they could change their mind on the way that they deal with that situation. I think that many would say, well, I guess if I threw it to you guys in the comments below, if you were Cloud9 and you had to choose Skies and Kiz to build around, or if you said, okay, we're going to build around Sib and we're going to bring in somebody from an AR perspective that wants to play with him, you know, as I'm saying, maybe a slasher, maybe an attach, somewhere like that, and then build the SMGs from there, then, you know, maybe Joe to Sieves plus one, that sounds like the making of a pretty competitive team to me. I don't know whether they're going to do that, though. That's what we were saying in last night's Dope Trick, really. The entire episode should now be uploaded. I had a couple of issues with it last night, but it should now be available for you guys to go and watch. Over on the Breaking Point channel, and, you know, maybe the argument is you keep Sib around going into next season, right? But some of the big talking points of the last few days has been on the pay cut situation, because we saw this even with the subliners last year. There was a bit of drama as to how true this really was, let's not forget. But you guys remember when the season ended subliners just won the world championship and subliners were saying oh well Priester, we can't afford his salary, so we're going to have to cut him down, and he doesn't want to take the pay cut, so we've got to let him go. Unlucky, Preston, you're out of here. And even Priester is another name that I didn't even mention over the last few minutes that, again, should be in the conversations for getting a roster spot next season. Absolutely right. So there's just not that many opportunities remaining on the table, especially, you know, gentle mates might come in for gorillas. They might have a couple of opportunities there, but as I said earlier today, they might want to have at least, you know, one French player on their roster, right, for the tenure. So it's a tricky one, but we know that roster drama in terms of pay cuts related drama is always a problem here in the esports. And, you know, when you add up the numbers, it's easy to understand why it's difficult to make this work. If you're paying someone, as the rumors were the other day, some of the players 500k, 750k a year. I mean, that's bonkers. And to be honest, I thought the numbers in terms of salaries were capping out at like 450, 500, maybe, which is still ridiculous to be fair, but, you know, 450, 500k a year I thought was like the upper limit really and maybe it kind of was but the salary cap is no longer a thing the salary cap was around in the first year of the league I think you had a salary cap of like 1.5 1.6 million dollars so um but Activision quickly realized that they actually can't enforce that because of California state law they need a counterparty so the salary cap was never going to be a thing really they couldn't make it last in the long term anyway if there was a players union they could have a negotiation and make something happen right but of course is it in the players best interest you know there's other factors in play but some of these guys are getting paid a lot of cash obviously and let's say you do the money you're paying a one and a half million dollars a year whatever for your team's salaries let's say you're paying everyone 400k and they will make it a fair chunk of change let's just you know looking at the numbers you've got to pay travel and expenses to the event as an organization most organizations don't take a serious cut of the prize money they might take 10 20 percent which um you know it's not getting that far in the grand scheme of things right and arguably the organizations should or could take more of that prize money split but then some of the players might not be so happy with that but you know it's potentially in everyone's best interest at that point to make that happen that is a matter for debate as well and obviously the players are then free to do their own thing make their own money in their own ways streaming and the organization isn't going to take any of their streaming revenue and you know what is the income for the organizations okay they have sponsors they have partners they have activations they can run maybe a couple of partners pay them in the you know in the six figure range but those partnerships might only cover the salary for like one player over the course of a season right ticket sales can happen but ticket sales for match days are not going to make the team a load of money like they would in regular sports because the organizations in very rare cases you know they don't own the stadiums so they're hiring the stadiums to run their events in over a weekend which is very expensive far more expensive than owning it themselves so you know the organizations are really just trying to break even on the home events they can't do ticket sales okay merchandise is a thing but maybe it doesn't go all that far and then there is the youtube deal which does have a pretty substantial you know media rights arrangement which does at least for the team like vegas for example paying the minimums over the last few years the youtube deal will cover all their salaries i'm pretty sure for the season but i think everyone knows looking at the economics that paying players four hundred thousand plus dollars a year each is just not gonna work and um you know hex talks about this seemingly confirming they're like yeah optic about to go through this as have many other organizations i think that the pay cuts uh that that, that happen across the 
the the scene is just something that was like inevitable that something like that would happen i do and i am happy at the fact that players got paid that much for as long as they did you know because otherwise if everything would have stayed the same they wouldn't made that additional one it would have been made more sustainable sure some of the stuff that happened didn't happen uh, but in the end, they got like an extra couple of years of like additional cash that was on there in their pockets. I hope that they that they that they you know put some here, put some there, put some everywhere, and it was good. So this is far from exclusive to Optic, of course, right? Other players and you know teamers have had to deal with this. Even the Los Angeles Thieves, I think, had to deal with it after they won champs. FaZe had to deal with it after they won champs of being like, look, guys, you know, we if you want to play together still, then you're gonna have to pay, you know, take less pay because we simply cannot afford to make. This work. So I think Hex's perspective is right that look, the way that the league was being run, the way that the salaries were competitive in and amongst the respective teams did mean that, you know, top teams like Optic, if they want to form a competitive roster, had to pay on some level the market rate to get these guys in. That they did, that the other organizations did when they had a lot of venture capital money flooding in. Now that's no longer the case and therefore there are problems. Bit of a reset. In the long run, it's probably going to be for the best. The players are going to make more content as a result, I guess. And the Optic guys are going to be fine. I mean, you know, they can turn the stream on and make their money back, obviously. I'm sure that Preds might have a thing or two just because you know he's been out there spending 30 40 50 grand i don't know what he spent on his european world tour but i can't imagine that it's been cheap what he's been up to over the last couple of months it seems at this point so print will be getting the gifted subs and i'm sure when he gets the stream back on but um you know look a lot of the streamers they stand to make an awful lot of money and scumps i imagine his twitch revenue would be at a come quite a long way to covering the salaries of an esports organization but um you know if the numbers don't add up for the organization itself changes need to be made but but of course, if you're optic or phase, really, you don't want to have to cut the salaries because then you might potentially lose out on the players that you have. They might go elsewhere where somebody is still offering big money. And potentially Thieves played a bit of a blinder this offseason, right? By taking a rest last year, saving it a bit of cash up, accepting the fact that they were going to have a difficult rebuild year for the fans, and then, you know, striking while the iron is hot, now back into the league. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time. Hi, Brock, I'm watching his back. Hello, I'm one they're, all the, they're all there. He said my mid. Scammer. I just said. Might be pinching me. Right. Right. I just said. Nice, nice, nice. I'm trying, I'm trying. Dude, our should be. That was a top rocket. He's probably hit our side. Yeah, I think he did. Shot trophy. Okay. Yes, it'd be like on. Yeah, it'd be yeah, like on. Yeah, I'm saying up. I'll tell you, I can't help you, I can't help you. I'm saying, I'm saying. Weak, weak mid subs. I'm trying to find him. He went right side subs. One burst me. Oh no, man. Holy fuck, Bad. dude. <laughs> no ways, I didn't know where the fuck this guy was. I don't know if he's gonna hit me right or run him in. What is that, bro? Bro, where is this cap on my team? Holy shit. We're good, we're good. Hey, we're chilling. Like, yeah, someone double A with me. I'll get your broken. I will. Uh, I'll get it. Oh, you got it? Yeah, yeah. I'll find my tank. You have trophy? Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, all right. EMP there, be yeah. I admit, I admit. Top rock, top rock. Top rock, top rock. Yo, Carmen, car. Carmen. Car. Top rock, top rock. Carmen. Car's gone. Nice. I came with B Street. Oh, you set. I don't see one, man. Left plant. Alright, you want to camo deep or what? They uh, plant? Help me deep. Oh, okay. yeah. You have camo. Camo, you both me. Camo. On me. Camo. 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 Both sides, both sides, both sides. Other ones behind you in the grave. Yeah, I'm staying up. Wait, push. I didn't hit him. Guys, you're pushing. Guys, push. Left, left side. You're good. Playing cap. They should have bomb. Make a plant, bro. You have glitch check. Nice. nice. Just, uh, just cap. They trolled both those other rounds so hard. Showing 8 Yeah. I fucked up that one while I was mid statue. Yeah, okay. Fucked my movement up and I didn't know what to watch. Okay. Good job. I just told you like a hard hold there. So, or like, <coughs> I just I knew he was from. out, but I didn't know if he was going to be mid or A. And I yeah. just honestly should just backed up tank ASAP. I should have done. Good play. <laughs> I know. How'd I kill this guy? Oh, yeah.